Hi, this is James for Pulsar Audio, and we're back with another take on a studio classic. Say hello to Pulsar Massive, a passive EQ with parallel bands, stereo operation, and plenty of analog behavior. Thanks to intricate and expert modeling, you get an EQ with personality, drive, and often dynamic results. But also modern conveniences like mid-side processing, high resolution frequency and gain selection, oversampling, and of course, full graphical curve editing with spectrum visualization and digital metering. Let's take a look. Pulsar Massive is a high-grade stereo EQ with two sets of four bands, which can operate in left-right or mid-side modes. Here we have all the knobs and switches you may be familiar with, as well as some extras which we'll cover in this video. But we don't even have to look at the knobs. We can make most of our changes using the graphical display. When we change a band here in the curve editor, both the left and right channels gain and frequency controls adapt at the same time. At any time, we can unlink the channels here to make different changes to left and right. Or we can switch the configuration into a mid and side pairing. We'll do more with this a little later, as well as showing off the saturation we can get from the drive and gain stages over here. We also have separate high and low pass filters, one for each channel. Pulsar Massive's auto gain function compensates for the boosts and cuts we've made, keeping the average level as consistent as possible from input to output. And we can use an alt click or option click to set any parameter back to its default. This also applies to entire band settings if we do it in the curve editor. When we boost or cut a band in the curve display, the level change is introduced using the filter's gain control. Once a band's gain reaches its maximum value, the bandwidth, or Q, takes over, providing a sharper, more focused boost for that left 10 dB. And the same behavior applied to cuts as well. Of course, you can still set the bandwidth higher while using a lower boost or cut, giving you a slightly tighter curve. You can even set the bandwidth in the curve editor's band control box or by scrolling your mouse wheel while hovering over a band. All four bands can be used as bell or shelving filters. Thanks to the passive EQ circuit emulation, boosting a low shelf also introduces some dynamic behavior to the bass frequencies. This is a bit more obvious at extreme settings, which we can demonstrate thanks to the auto gain. A single shelf can have its bandwidth increased to introduce a complementary scoop next to a big boost or a bump next to a big cut. We get the same effect from the high shelf, 
with a corresponding cut before a boost for air. As we push the frequency knob into its highest values, that scoop starts behaving a bit differently. From 16 kHz, it gives you a deep 8 kHz cut, which is helpful to reduce sibilance and harshness while still adding air. Playing with a bandwidth control can dial back or increase the effect, depending on the source you're working with. frequency shelf also acts differently when it gets to very low values, keeping the very, very low frequencies from getting boosted. This is done to protect speakers and to keep any subsequent dynamics processing more accurate. This behavior still happens to both shelving filters at lower bandwidth settings, it's just a little different. Pulsar Massive is a parallel EQ unit. Every filter processes a copy of the original signal and these copies are summed together again to get the final signal. In practice, this means that we can boost two bands and they won't just sum and add together where the bands cross over. We get a more accurate frequency response from both. On the bass, we'll solo a band by holding shift and use one big boost to pick out some high end in the instrument. We'll also bring out some even higher frequency information, getting the pick scrape out from some of the highest frequencies. Even with these two bands right on top of each other, they still don't sum. Their parallel processing means that doing this is safer and more musical, whereas in a normal serial EQ, there would be a huge bridge between them where their gains add together. We've been using Pulsar Massive in dual stereo mode this whole time, but let's crack out the mid side mode for a different take. When we flip into mid-side mode, the two EQ channels automatically unlink so we can use them separately. Now the left channel of four filters is processing mids, everything fully centered, and the right channel is processing sides, everything not fully centered. In the mid view on the curve, we can carve out some of the frequencies that are making this track compete with other central elements. And in the sides view, we can boost its highs, making it play more as an ambient stereo part. Let's bypass to hear the changes. Pulsar Massive's filtering requires a few electrical stages that all introduce some non-linearity into the signal. The filter's inductors, the tube amplifier after the filter, and the output transformers can all generate distortion. In other words, Pulsar Massive can give us drive and saturation effects, as well as just EQ. Let's add two low shelving filters, one to cut and the other to boost.
Now, even though the frequency response is mostly undisturbed, the circuitry of the two filters has left us with a noticeable distortion. We can increase the amount of circuit nonlinearity using the drive control. The drive is bipolar, so we can even reduce it down from zero, getting rid of the analog saturation and cleaning the signal up again. The output gain controls aren't as innocent as you might think either. They're placed after the filter circuits, but before a stage of amplification and an output transformer. So pushing these up or down will affect the amount of distortion too. There are also two models of transformer to try out. Number one emulates the original unit's transformer and output circuit, and number two cuts things a little hotter, enhancing the dynamic characteristics as well. This double low shelf formulation might remind you of something. By setting the boost shelf and the cut shelf to different frequencies, we can perform a classic low end trick associated with passive EQs. In fact, we can do this using just a single band in Pulsar Massive thanks to the bandwidth control. But with two curves and two bandwidth controls, plus continuous frequency and gain controls, we can come up with more flexible low-end tricks, which give us musical results and can be handy for mixing. In the menu, you can switch the EQ back into its old habits using stepped frequencies or half steps between them. and using stepped gains of 1 dB, 2 dB, or 4 dB. Sitting behind the curve editor, we have a useful visual analyzer. This lets us see the frequency spectrum as it moves using fast mode, or with a longer time window in slow mode. If we select infinite spectrum, the frequency profile of the whole channel builds up as a gray area behind the white line, so you can see the buildup of a sound's energy at different frequencies. You can reset this by clicking on the graphical display. For more control within the curve editor, we can hover over a band to bring up a dialog box. From here, we can deactivate the band's processing, switch it between a bell and a shelf, and type values for frequency, bandwidth, and gain. We can also rename the band here, just like at the top of each strip, to remind us later what sort of function that band was fulfilling. Finally, the metering on the right displays RMS, peak, and peak hold readouts for input and output. And you can see the overall difference between the input and output signals level using the blue bars. You can get Pulsar Massive or try the free demo at pulsar.audio.